Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Rev. Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. Good evening and welcome to SBC Praise Ministers Bible Study. I'm Youth Pastor Sean Douglas. Good evening, I'm Youth Pastor Makima Douglas. And we want to thank the doctor, Reverend Dr. James Allen Duncans, our senior pastor, for giving us an opportunity to, to teach the Word of God. We've been having an exciting time over the last two weeks yes, we uh, of study in the book of Nehemiah. Uh, our title for the Bible series that we're doing is The Four R's to a Victorious 2021. The Four R's to a Victorious 2021. And we talked about the reset, the restart, and this week we'll be talking about the readjust. readjust. So we're going to get started in a couple of seconds. I'm going to have my wife pray, and then we're going to get right into the Bible study. Oh, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for your tender mercies and kindness. Thank you, Father, for watching over us and keeping us safe. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you show up right now in this Bible study, that you bring to our remembrance every, every word, every thought, every fact, whatever we need to share, Lord. Let it just come to our remembrance at the perfect time that someone might receive that word, Lord, and grow. So I thank you for allowing us to share the word of God. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 So in, in, in review of what we did the first week and second week, we're just going to rehash some things really quickly and then get you up to speed. But if you're just sitting down, you got your cup of coffee, you got your, your, your tea, you know, put, put your slippers on and take them off. We just want to invite you to come and enjoy Bible study with us tonight and enjoy the Word of God. So sit back, relax, call a friend, let them know that Stay tuned. Bible Don't study is on right now. SBC Praise, tune in right now. It's so important. In way of the reset, we talked about in the book of Nehemiah, we talked about and Nehemiah is on the scene in, in chapter 1, and we find out that Nehemiah is the cupbearer to the king of Persia. And, and in doing so, he, he inquires about the people who are left back in, 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 in Judah, um, in Israel, the exiles. And he asks his brother, he, say, he asks his brother, he's like, how are they doing? And, and Nehemiah gets the news that the people are in despair and the walls have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that he began to weep, he mourned, he fasted, and prayed. And we want you to understand that if you're going to reset your life, you got to be able to connect. The Nehemiah connected to the cause of the people, the concern of the people, but also he understood that God had a vision for him, a plan for his life. And it's so important that you understand that Jesus has a plan for your life. If you want to reset, Jesus is the ultimate reset for your life. So whether you're of the, a Christian who's been saved for 20 years or if you just want to get saved tonight, the reset is available to you through Jesus Christ, through the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for our sins. So that was the reset. And then we started with the restart, which was Nehemiah chapter 2, which was so important. We understood at the end of chapter 1, when Nehemiah prayed, he asked for two things. He said, Lord, grant me favor with the king. Grant me favor with the king, because I am the cupbearer. And that's how he ended chapter 1. And then when we start chapter 2, He's before the king, and the king asks Nehemiah, he says, Nehemiah, what's wrong with you? You, you're, you come before me, and you're sad, and it only give you a sadness of heart that you have. And Nehemiah says, why should I be happy, and my people are suffering? All right. And so that led him to say, the king said, well, Nehemiah, what do you want me to do for you? Mm -hmm. And we find out that God grants him favor before the king. Amen. And he says, king, I, I want to go back, and I want to rebuild the walls. And the king says, well, what do you need? And Nehemiah begins to lay out his plan about rebuilding and restarting. And we understand that if you're going to restart, you're going to need God's favor. You're going to need God's hand on your life. So it's so, so important that we understand that in a reset, you're going to need Jesus. But in a restart, you're going to need Jesus also. If you want Jesus to restart your vision, the plan for your life, he can do it. Jesus is the answer. So we understand that in the restart, Nehemiah gets favor. And we all need God's favor if we want to accomplish his vision and his plan for his kingdom, but also for our life. And at the end of Nehemiah chapter 2, um, 
He has to make a declaration because there's an enemy that raises its head and it, it becomes, uh, it's in the name of, of, of Tobiah and, and, and what, what's the other gentleman's name? Sin uh, Sinbal. And these are enemies of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. These were the people who inhabited the land before God had given the land to the Israelites. This was the land that was flowing with milk and honey and the Israelites had occupied the land, but they had to take it from the people who were inhabiting the land. And the and the, the Huronites and the and the Jebusites and all those ites were a part of that land that they think they took over. Uh -huh. And so now we find that now they're the enemy of the Israelites, and now they're oppressing them. And when they hear about Nehemiah going back, they said that you, they were disturbed that he would go back and inquire about the welfare of the Israelites who were left in exile. And so we find that he has to make a declaration in spite of the circumstances, in spite of his fears, because the, it, just, just in review, the king asked him, before the king even asked him, um, the Bible says that Nehemiah said, I was fearful, but then I spoke. And we understand that our fears cannot hold us. We got to be able to speak in spite of our fears. And so now fast forwarding, chapter three, the work begins. We see all the work that they are putting in. It talks about all the families, all the tribes who come back to help rebuild the walls Amen. and restore the people. And so after chapter three, it takes us to chapter four. Right. And that's where we'll start tonight, at chapter four. And I think you, you're gonna start right here. Too. When Sam Bell had heard that, they, that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble, burned as they are? The readjust. In readjusting, you have to understand, there's always going to be haters and naysayers that's the enemy's purpose his job is to attack you but we need to be aware that he has tactics and schemes and strategies so we need to be like first peter 5 and 8 says be alert and of sober mind your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour he's searching and looking making a whole lot of noise but it doesn't mean he can devour you or touch you. We need to be aware of that. The enemy is going to cause you to question, to question your abilities, to question your integrity. He wants you to doubt. Because just imagine what you would do if you believed that God would do it through you. You need to know it first so you can stand against the enemy. And Luke 10, verses 18 through 19, this is what Jesus says <clears throat> to the disciples. He says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. This is the mindset that we need to have because this is one of the strategies that you will need to use when the enemy comes for you. And, and can I say something here? And, and when Jesus is speaking, he's talking about he's giving us authority mm -hmm. and power mm -hmm. over the enemy. Mm -hmm. Like you said, nothing. Not some things. He didn't say, you know, this might happen to you. Or he said a few things. He says nothing will be able to harm you. Not even your fears. Amen. Amen. So then we look at Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. And it says this. Hear us, our God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their heads, on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in the land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. It's amazing how the enemy wants to accuse us all the time. He's always a, he's an accuser of the brethren. And we got to understand, we, his strategies and tactics it are, are just to keep us, you know, or, or, distract, the, or distract us mm -hmm. from God's vision for our life. Mm -hmm. So it's so important that we understand that if, when we reset and we restart and then we begin to readjust, uh, our readjustment is 
knowing that the enemy is going to try everything possible to stop God's vision for your life. But it's your authority that God has given you to trample on everything that, that comes in your way. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And it's so important, a weapon that we use is it. prayer. Prayer is your weapon. It's one of your many weapons. Now, what we just read was Nehemiah's prayer, which he basically said, get him, God. God said, vengeance is mine. The enemy can't take anything that you're supposed to have. And what God expects and plans to do in your life, he will do. And the only thing can stop you is you. Amen. Amen. Is Amen. you. But here's one of your weapons. Pray for yourself. Not only do you need to pray for others, you need to pray for yourself. And God said that we should even love our enemies and pray for them. Jesus Christ said, let the mind that is in him be in you. We have to renew, readjust our mindset so that we can handle these situations when they arise because they are going to come. And I, I just want to read that. For, mm -hmm. for Luke 18 and 1 says, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and, and not, not give, give up. up. Isn't that, that the hardest part? Not to give up. There's always going to be that urge to quit. You could be that close to the finish line. And just one, one onslaught can make you forget about all the work you've done. But your work is not in vain. you got to continue to press and press and stand until you get to that mark. Amen. Amen. If you're going to readjust, you, you're going to need a prayer life. Mm -hmm. And we, we said level up. You're going to have to level up your prayer because the attacks are going to yep. increase as you become aware of where God wants to take you mm -hmm. and where he brought you from. Now, when you understand that, mm -hmm. you understand that the devil, like I said, he's going to throw everything at you when you understand your vision and your purpose for your life, mm -hmm. what God has given you. Mm -hmm. And so level up. That, that's the next thing you need to do. They used so, to say, what is it, higher levels, more devils? Yeah. Got to yeah. be prepared. And God is going to make us accountable. You're hearing this tonight? God wants you to activate it and use it in your personal decisions, in your personal lifestyle, in your, on your job, when you're with your children, when you're with your family, when you're with your friends. Pray without ceasing if that's what you have to do. And, and you got to understand, prayer is our communication. It's, it's our conversation that we have with God. It's a level of commitment, a level of worship that we have with God. But it also lets God know that we trust him. Mm -hmm. That we, it, The final decision is his. It, you know, uh, we talk about it all the time and we say it all the time. But you know what? When we, when we get in situations and, and we get problems and issues in our life, sometimes we lean on other things but God. But God says, you know what? I need you to lean on me. Mm -hmm. Not only, you know, through, 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 your, through, your, through, through the good times, mm -hmm. but when the rubber meets the road, when, when, you, when you're down, yeah. when you're hurting, when you're discouraged, mm -hmm. when, when, when you're distraught, because you gotta realize the people in Nehemiah, it says they were living in the rubble. Yeah. The, the walls were burnt. Mm -hmm. The people were in despair. Yeah. They were walking in this. Mm -hmm. And had gotten used to this. How many things are broken in our lives and we walk wow. past them every day? Wow. Broken marriages, broken friendships, broken relationships, broken finances, broken house, home, etc. God wants us to recognize that it's broken and work on building it back up. Level up. We, we have to level up. Amen. So Nehemiah chapter 4 and 6 says this. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it had reached half its heights. For the people were with all their heart. Mm -hmm. Another translation says they worked with one mind. Yes. With one mindset. They were unified. They were unified. They came in the to, it, it's, not a, it's not a head thing, like I said last week. It's a heart thing. Mm -hmm. When Jesus changes your heart, it, 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 it can open up doors that you wouldn't even imagine, mm -hmm. that you can't even think of. Mm -hmm. So it's not a head thing, y'all. It's a heart thing. And when Jesus touches your heart, your life will be forever changed. Let your enemies, enemies fuel your passion. All of this that you're going through, it should motivate you. Know that if you're going through, and it's, it's, it's not an easy win, uh, you, you're going to fall in diverse temptations and trials and hardships, keep pressing. Amen. Amen. There's a reward for your perseverance, learning temperance and patience. 
And God promises us that if we stand, it, not only will he give us the capability to do it, but he will hold us up. He said, in our, weak, in our weakness, we're made strong in him. Amen. Amen. So in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, it says, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Your labor is not in vain. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. Ain't it good to know I'm not just wasting time. I didn't go through that just because. Yeah. All things are going to work together for our good. Amen. 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 And it's important that we know that. Nehemiah and the people, in spite of the opposition, in spite of the threats, in spite of the ridicule, in spite of the of the jokes, and you know, because we hear them now as Christians, we hear them now we, you know, we, you know, as Christians, we we hear it don't take all that, and, and you know what, what what's all that about Jesus and what, what's all that Jesus stuff? You know, people talk about that all the time. They're fake or hypocrites. Yeah, yeah, but but God says, you know, stand right there, stand firm. You know, don't be moved. Because your labor is not in vain. Keep working. Amen. Keep working. Jesus can change our heart. Amen. Philippians 2 and to verses 2 and 3 says this. Um, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one in spirit and one of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's not about you. It, 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 you know, because sometimes we can get caught in that. It's, it's about my life and what I do, my career, my job, my, you know, what, how much money I'm making. God says, no, it's not. Don't worry about those things. I, I can take care of those things for you. But if you get your mind on the people and their concerns, mm -hmm. then 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 I can move. I, I, I can I, I can do some things. I, I All can, the other things yeah. that shall be added to you, the other things. Yeah. But first, we have to have a care, a care and concern for others. Mm -hmm. And that's what Nehemiah shows us in this book from chapter 1. When he hears about his brothers and sisters who are suffering and hurting, he says, I mourn. I had a deep regret. I'm sorrowful. I'm, I, 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 Lord, I want to repent. Lord, I want to do something. Give me favor so I can do something for you. I want your vision and your purpose for my life. It's amazing what we can do when we put God first. And when we work together. Amen. Amen. Nehemiah, verses of chapter of chapter 4, verse 7, 8 says this. But when Samballot, Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed. They were very angry, and they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. Wow. The, the enemy is going to raise his head when you say, I'm standing for God. I'm going to live for God. I made my decision. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. You better believe that the enemy will be angry, upset. He want to stir up trouble in your life. But know this. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. But I like what Nehemiah did in verse, verse 9. He says this, But we prayed to our God and posted guard day and night to meet this threat. What was the threat? That these people were angry that they were rebuilding the walls. Yeah. That they were saving people's lives. Mm -hmm. They were speaking life to death. And they were upset that someone would, would care and concern about these people so much that they would come back and build God's house. And I like what you said before when we were in our study time talking about the walls. Can you tell me about, you were saying what the walls represented and what it meant. And, and, and you, you, were, you were giving me something in Bible study and I, it felt so good. I, I want you to say it. If you don't, I, I know what you said. Go ahead say it. And then maybe I'll help you out. Go ahead. Because <laughs> you got to realize the, the walls being built, uh -huh. that's God's protection. Yes. That's God's safety. That, that's God, you know, say he got you. Mm -hmm. The walls were destroyed. There were yeah. rubble. Yeah. There were gaps in the wall. Yeah. And we got to understand when we see gaps in the church, in the body of Christ, yeah. out in the community, us as believers, we have to fill those gaps. We should be the first ones. We first should be rebuilding the walls. Amen. 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 But the enemy got bad, got mad, yeah, and started acting bad once he saw that the people were of one mind, 
they were getting the job done. Because it says, all those threats, they did so much work, they were halfway done. Not with just a little bit of wall, yeah. the whole wall got halfway done. And the enemy was just so mad that, because he accused him, you ain't, you know, what y'all doing, y'all feeble and, and what are you doing? And you're trying to do this. And, and, and a fox, if he fell on one of your rocks, they were all, cook. I mean, clowning him. But in doing that, it motivated them. And the enemy got mad because he saw results. He saw results. And you know what? We've got to expect results when we start out. Amen. Because a lot of people don't get halfway done, or they get halfway done and stop. Mm. Mm. And, and that, I like what we put up here because it's so important that we understand that our prayer life is a weapon. Mm -hmm. It's important. And if you don't understand that your language to God, you speaking it. And if you go back to chapter one, Nehemiah presents this from, from chapter one through chapter four. Every time opposition came, or every time he wanted to answer, he prayed first. Mm -hmm. He talked to God first. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you that before you make decisions about your life, mm -hmm. that you talk to God first. Mm -hmm. That you acknowledge God and you accept Jesus Christ and you accept his authority over your life and that he is the final say in every decision that you should make. James chapter 5 verse 16 says this, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. That's what we need to be doing. Our, our fervent prayers are going to avail. I like that they were wise. It says, now we know what the enemy, he's, he's always looking and waiting to see you off guard. But it says, Nehemiah said, we pray, right? Yeah. We pray to our God. But we, we still we still posted guards out there day and night to meet the threat. You still got to be strategic. We don't pray, but God wants you to have wisdom as how to cover those bases. Pray for everybody that's a part of whatever the plan is. Pray for your family. Pray for your cousins. Pray for the people on your jobs. You got to cover all the bases. Because the enemy will come in any way he can. He's looking for those weak spots. So it is important. You pray, but you also cover those weaker parts. You get to work. That means you, you just don't rely on your prayer life. You know, God wants action. You, you, so we are his hands and his feet. So if he wants something done, he's going to use us to get it done. So you have to understand that after you pray, you just don't sit there in a the, the pew or in your house or on your job. And No, God wants you to work. Put your hands to the plow and begin to do something in the action of your prayer. Amen. Because it's so important. They didn't just pray, they posted and watched. They were ready for the threat. Yep. They were ready for the attack. Okay. And you have to be ready for the attack in your life. Amen. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Readjust. Readjust. Mm -hmm. As we move on, yes. <laughs> the attacks never, never stop. stop. Mm -hmm. In verses in verses <laughs> 10 through 12, if you begin to read. As Nehemiah, after he finds out that, that, that the enemy is rearing its head and they're angry and they're upset, and he hears about the plot, he says he's prayed, but then they began to watch. You know, they, they set up guards. But then in verses 10 through 12, various people come to Nehemiah with, with this same threats. It says Judah came to him. This same people came to him and said, leaders, leaders, our people are weary. It's so much rubble. We won't be able to get it done. And sometimes we hear that in the church when we lay out vision or pastor lays out vision. It's too much work. Why do we have to do all that? But God said he's requiring us mm -hmm. that we got to look beyond our circumstances but by what we say. And we got to walk by faith and not by sight. Because that is the thing that will kill a vision if we're not walking by faith. Amen. Amen. And then I, I like the next thing that was the enemy. The enemy they said, the enemy came and said, as soon as you turn your back, as soon as you turn around, we're going to be there. We're going to kill you. The enemy started making threats. Now look at it. Verse 10, it was Judah. Verse 11, it was the enemy. The enemy came up and said, you know what? As soon as you begin work, as soon as you start this vision, as soon as you start accepting Christ, you, we're going to cause some trouble. This is going to be, I, we're going to kill you. Nothing but threats. That's all he has. That's all the devil has is threats. And then in verse 12, it says, the people from the area came around and said, 10 times, they said 10 times they came to him and said the same thing. Oh, you better watch out because that Sam Ballin, they're coming for you. 
Because because you rebuild the walls. You, you, you're doing something. You're doing God's work. They're coming for you. Ten times they came to them and said it. But watch what Nehemiah does. Watch what Nehemiah does. He wasn't discouraged. He wasn't disappointed. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't scared. John 10 and 10 says this. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to kill you. He wants to steal from you. And he wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy that vision God has for you. He wants to kill that vision God has for you. But on the flip side, at the end of it, it says, Jesus said, but I've come to give you life. And an abundant life. Not an ordinary life. Not a regular life. But a life of more than. And you have to understand, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to have a more than life. Sometimes it may not feel like that. Sometimes it may not look like that. Sometimes you may be going through struggles and trials and hardships. But know that God said he would never leave us or forsake us. And we have to stand on his promises. And readjust your mindset. I mean, the fact that we, the Bible records this and says it over and over again means it is a cycle. It's going to continue to happen. But again, guess what? We can rise up. Trust God and do more. Don't give up. Resist the urge to quit. I like this. Be ready for the battle. Mm -hmm. Be ready for the battle. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah was ready for the battle. And it says this in verse 13. After verse 10, 11, and 12, after all the threats and after all the all the naysaying, well, why can't we? If the rebel's too much. We, we can't do the work. And people coming to him 10 times saying, they're going to they after you. They're going to kill you. And verse 13, Nehemiah says this. Therefore, I stationed some people, some of the people, behind the lowest points of the wall of the exposed places, posting them by families with swords, spears, and bows. I know you had something for this. This is a whole nother lesson by itself, but we're just going to be practical in explaining. If the Bible had to make these distinctions, it means each one of these had a specific purpose. Swords, spears, and bows. Swords, spears, and boats. Now we know naturally they're weapons, right? And they're weapons, the sword, you're going to use that. There's so many scriptures that talk about the double sided sword, and we use the word, right? The sword has each one of these weapons have points on them. Now, the sword, you can use it as an up close, like a little jagger kind of, kind of dagger kind of mm -hmm. um, weapon to cut things down, but it has a, it's normally like this long piercing, piercing rod close to close battle. Spears, normally you take those and you throw those. Again, they have points on them, but you throw them out to warn your enemy or to slay your enemy that might be from a distance. Come on. And then your bows, that's a whole other setup. But again, you have those arrows that go way up. Uh-huh. Way up. Oh, wow. We got devils everywhere. Different <laughs> situations. Go way up. Get them, get them, get them, get them. And land. Land to destroy. But again, it's a mindset that we got to be tactical tactical when we talk about how we're going to lay out the plans that God has for us, how we're going to execute them, who's going to be in those plans, and how we go forward in the midst of being discouraged and attacks all around us. We need to have swords, spears, and arrows. And I will say in the simplest way, find scriptures that line up with Amen. where you are or Amen. what you're going through or what's happening in your life. Those are your swords, your spears, your bows, and your arrows. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 6, 10, 11 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The enemy, the tricks, the strategies, the, you know, the things he's trying to do to keep you from God's vision. Man, I'm going to kill you. You're never going to be anything. Uh, your dad wasn't nothing. You're not going to be. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you, you was a nobody. You're still going to be a nobody. You, why, why, why should God trust you? He's going to try to put doubt yeah. in your mind. Don't let him do it. Know that the greater one lives within you. That Jesus Christ lives on the inside. And greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. And you got to understand that and live on that. Because we can, we can easily be distracted if we don't have on the whole arm. Yep. But, but, and this I, whole point where it says the wiles, the wiles of the devil, we are living in some crazy times. We're seeing 
unprecedented foolishness. All kinds of things are happening. So the wiles, that can be a number of things. But the word of God says there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. There's no temptation that you're going to go into that God can't get you out of Amen. or doesn't give you a way of escape. But know this is going to happen. But Amen. we need to be prepared for the warfare. Amen. Prepare for the battle. Just look at your neighbor and say, be ready for the battle. Be ready. Be ready for the battle. It, it's it's going to take your prayer life and for you to level up. Mm -hmm. Just look at the neighbor and say, level up. Level up. Because that's so important that you level up in your prayer life in order to fight against the devil. Amen. Verse 4 and 14 of Nehemiah says this. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people. I'm going to stop right here real quick. He, he's addressing everybody. He, he's talking about the leaders. He's talking about the officials. And he's talking about the lay people, the people who are working. He's talking about everybody here. Don't be afraid of them. Hallelujah. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. You got to fight. Be ready for the battle. God is letting you know now through Nehemiah. Remember the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Stand after all you have done. Stand. Uh -huh. And you know what? God allows us to go through things so we can get to a place to do this. Because Nehemiah started out confessing, I'm afraid. Yeah. I'm afraid. And this one he says, after I looked things over. Come on. Because he saw the fear in their faces. He was able to look back over my life. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> and wonder how I made it over and encourage somebody else. I, I like that. Good. Because when you look back and you remember, right? You, you remember what God brought you through in the past, right? And then you can testify what he's doing in the present, but also know that he has a future for you. So he protects your past, your present, and your future. He holds it all in his hands. And so remember that as you go through. And he says, remember the Lord and how great and awesome he is. But then he says, hold up and fight. And fight. He says, fight for your families. Fight for your sons. Fight for your fight for your fight for your household. You're gonna need that prayer of faith. You to fight that fight. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's breaking out in your life. I don't care what circumstances you're going through. You're gonna need to fight. Mm -hmm. And it's not gonna be no ordinary fight. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be some Lord. I need you right now. You might have to get on your knees. You might have to get in a prayer closet. You might have to escape and go somewhere in your quiet time, alone time. Just to pray and fight. But remember what you're fighting for. You're fighting for the kingdom. You're fighting for the vision that God has for his people. Remember what you're fighting for. And that's what Nehemiah wanted to tell the people. I don't care what they said. I don't care what they're coming at you with. Yeah, we're going to post guards. We're going to be aware. We're going to be ready if they come. Because we got our, our swords, our spears, and our bows. So if they do try to attack us, guess what? We're we going to be ready to attack. Mm -hmm. So that, what does that mean to me? I, I got to get ready. That means I got to get in my word. I got to study. Because if, if I'm going to stand on God's word, I need to pray God's word. Right? Because I got to stand on it. Because only his word will last. He, he, he is faithful and just. We serve a faithful and just God. Amen. He honors his word. Yes, so if he says he's going to protect us, he's going to protect us. If he says he's going to make a way for us, he's going to make a way for us. Understand that and know that God will honor his promises for your life. But you got to be able to stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we cover quite a bit of this. But if we made it practical for you to remember, always address your fears. If they're hindering you, put it on your feet. Amen. And the quickest way to do that is admit, I'm, I'm afraid or I'm scared or I'm terrified, but I will. Then you keep going. Then you do. 1 John 4 and 18 talks about God's love and God is love. And it goes on to tell us that God's perfect love casts out all Amen. fear. Because Amen. fear torments. Amen. Fear torments. It'll just in your head, in your mind, you gotta cast it down. But his perfect love, if you allow yourself to just feel God's love, his care, his thoughts about you, you're made in his image. 
You were fearfully and wonderfully made. Before you know it, you're not afraid. You're thinking about him. And then let him work through you. So put your mind on God's greatness and his power. It's what he's able to do. And God loves a challenge. Amen. <laughs> and they always say, they use the acronym fear all the time. And they say, fear is false evidence appearing real. And that's what fear is. We, we 90% of the stuff we worry about never happened. But in our minds, we can play through it. Our mind can play tricks on us. Right, at, at times, and of thinking of things that never will come to pass, but we, we're so worried, we're, we're sleepless, we, you know, we, we, we have anxiety about things that never happen, that never come to pass, but it's that false evidence appearing real, and that's all it is. And put your heart on what's at stake so you can fight. If you put your mind on the vision on the goal, on your purpose, let that propel you. Let it project you. Let it get you through the bigger picture. It's not just me, but it's all those that are following. It's all those that are before me that I gotta bring with me. It's all those that I have to influence. Those that are looking and I don't know they're looking. Those that are listening and you didn't know they were listening. Those that are watching, studying you. The bigger picture. We want them to ultimately see God. Ultimately see Amen. God through us. Amen. So as we go through, we talk about the reset. Jesus is the reset. Jesus is the restart. And now we're looking at Jesus as, as we readjust. And Nehemiah had to readjust his plan based on what the enemy was trying to do. And we see that in chapter 4. So sometimes in our prayer life, we got to adjust. We got to adjust. We got we to sense, we got to feel that when the enemy is coming upon us, that we need to get on our knees yeah. and, and begin to ask God, where do you want me to go? Mm -hmm. How do you want me to do it? Mm -hmm. And Nehemiah is very strategic through, if you read the book, from laying out from chapter one to chapter two, when, when he's talking to the king and he says, I need letters for the wood. I need letters for protection. I need, he's, he lays it out. After the timelines too. Timeline, but after he prays and talks to God. Mm -hmm. Every time he prays, something happens. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand, when you pray, something is going to happen. It's not by chance. It, it's not by luck. Or No, it is God's hand working in your life. It is God's divine provision for your life. Remember, with vision, there's provision. He's always going to provide for the vision that he gives his people and the kingdom that he wants us to build. Nehemiah 4 and 15 says this. And when our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all turned to the wall, each to our own work. Hmm. Funny. God, God, when our enemies heard that we are aware of their plot, so, so God let Nehemiah know what the enemy was thinking. What, 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 he, what, what, he, was, what he thought he said he was going to do to him. He's going to kill him. He's going to destroy him. You ain't going to be able to rebuild the wall. He said, but God frustrated him. He, it didn't come to pass. Yeah. It, it, it's not going to work. No weapon formed against us. It's not going to work. They can form it, but it's not going to work. God has other plans. Amen. Amen. And it says, we all return to the wall, Amen. each to our own work. Genesis 50 and 20 says this. You you were, this, is, this, this is Joseph talking. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what now is being done, the saving of many lives. What you meant for evil, what, what the devil meant for evil, God turns it around for our good. What, you know, what the enemy talks about, no, it's, it, it won't work. It's not going to happen. Because what you thought you were going to do was you was going to stop God's plan. You was going to block God's vision. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. Readjust. And it says they, 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 they kept working. Yes. Once they found out that God had frustrated it, yep. they went back to work. Everybody. Everybody went to work. Everyone had a job yeah. on the wall, and everyone went back to work. God has something for everyone to do. God's got it. While we're working, yep. while we're building, That's while right. we're strategizing. And I hope you're on the right side. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you are on 
the right side. So you might need to check that. We, I hope you're on the Lord's side because God will protect. When we talk about what happened to the enemy, another passage says God frustrated their counsel. So all those haters and liars and those that you think are talking behind your back and all that, all of that is going to work together for your good. They Amen. are stepping stones. Amen. Stepping stones. Amen. Amen. Keep working. Keep working. That, that, that's, the, that's the focus we want you to do. Keep working the vision. Amen. Keep working God's plan for your life. God's got it. Know that he has it. Amen. He is in control. Amen. Here we go. Now, as we look back, as we reset, as we talk about the reset, we understand that God, Jesus, is the ultimate reset. Right? For your life, whether you just accept him or you've been in church for 25, 30 years, he can reset it. And then we talk about the restart. He can restart the vision, but we need his favor to do it. We need his hand. We need his approval. We need his blessing. We need his acceptance in order to get it done. There's vision. Jesus is our restart. And now that we readjust, we got to understand that we got to readjust our prayer life. Our, 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 our personal time with God, our commitment to God, in light of what the enemy wants to do, we have to understand that we seek God first. Amen. And once we seek God first, he said, if we seek him and his righteousness, he's going to add, add all the other things unto yeah. us. And it's so important that we, we don't get caught up or hung up with what the enemy is trying to do and what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Do what Nehemiah did. Chapter 1. He heard about the trouble. He prayed. He prayed, he repented, he said, Lord, give me favor. Chapter 2, before he spoke to the king, he prayed. King, this is what I need. Then when opposition came, he prayed again. He said, Lord, they want to they kill us. Turn it on them. Turn it around. They, 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 you know, kill them. You know, we, we, you, they're not going to succeed. We, 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 we're going to succeed. So his prayer you got to understand, your prayer life is so important yes. to your connection yes. to God. Yes. Don't lose it. If you don't have it, get it. Mm -hmm. And I say to the young people, it, it's just, it can just be a simple five-minute prayer. You don't got to be on your knees sweating and you know, foaming at the mouth. God can hear you right where you are. Amen. So tonight, if you need God's help, mm -hmm. all you got to say is, Lord, I need your help. Yes. help. What did Peter say when he was out on the water when he was sinking? Lord, if it's you, let me be, let me come under you. But then he got distracted, uh -huh. and, and he started to sing. And he said, "Lord, uh -huh. help me, <laughs> help me, Lord, I need you right now." And that's the prayer we need to say sometimes when we're in trouble yeah. and we don't know where we are. Lord, help me right now. I don't know what to say. And in Romans it says that when we don't know what to pray for, the Spirit intercedes for us. We have to understand that God's plan for our life is better than the world's plan for our life. Amen. So as we end tonight, and we talked about being victorious in 2021, you got to reset. Reset what? To God's vision, to God's plan, to God's purpose for your life. And know that Jesus is the ultimate reset. Yeah. And then you got to restart what? you got to restart your work. Get, get busy. Yeah. Get working for God. And understand that, God, I need your favor to get it done. And Lord... Once I restart, I, I may need to readjust because the enemy is upset and mad. Mm -hmm. And guess what I'm going to readjust? My prayer life, my study life, my Bible study, the habits, the, the, the things that I do. I'm going to make sure that I put you first. Yeah. And all that I do and say, every decision I make. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we just want to thank you for another thank opportunity you. tonight to be in your presence, to be in your will. Thank you. we, we enjoyed this Bible study time together. And I'm going to end this in prayer really quick. And hopefully next week you'll join us as we talk about the refocus. And that will be our last Bible study for the month. I mean, for the beginning of the month of March. But let us bow in prayer really quick. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to be in your presence, to be in your will. Lord, help us. Help us to understand your vision for our life your purpose for our life, the promise you have for our life, the provision that you have over our life. Lord, it's a setup from the beginning. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for our sins. 
Father, we thank you for the promises. Father, we thank you for the vision. Father, give us a heart that we may, uh, we may serve your people. And Father, we thank you for this time. So have us reset, restart, but also readjust. And know that if we put you first, Lord, that, Father, there's nothing impossible. So we thank you right now for all of your blessings. In the master's name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night. See you next week. Good night.